I think that there's never much hype about Oklahoma, at least not in the past. I feel like we kind of have that underdog mentality and we're okay with it, but I don't feel like a lot of credit's ever been given to our athletes. We don't have a ton of big names on our team. We are not a team of elite athletes. We are a team of JO level 10 athletes sprinkled with elites. You know, we're a cupcake with sprinkles on it and we are very pretty and they do beautiful things. We're always kind of toted as the underdog. Isn't that team so adorable? They work really hard. They're trying, they're almost there. Aren't they cute? But the fact is, is we're, we're not that cute. We're really serious and about what we're doing. We have big goals and I think that we're producing great gymnastics and wonderful women and they're going on to do awesome things and you know we feel very accomplished in what we've been able to do here. I started coaching while I was in college and actually I started doing choreography when I was in high school. So I did my own routine and I would do some of my teammates' routines. When I was in college, back in those days we could do whatever we wanted, you know, as far as um, earning money and things like that. So I coached on the side at the local club that was right out of our gym. When I graduated, I graduated at a semester the head coach resigned. For a head coach to resign mid-year is really odd. You know, you probably don't hear of it very often. I kind of looking back feel like he did that in order to kind of help me move into my career. Um, he probably knew that at mid-semester they probably couldn't, you know, go out and find a coach that would leave their team in the middle of the year and that sort of thing. And, um, so our assistant coach slid right into the head position and I, I was hired as the assistant. I don't know that in my head I, was, I ever said, I'm going to be a coach, this is what I want to do, but I always loved to do it. And so when that all happened, it just kind of made the decision for me, this is your path, and I never looked back. 2006, uh, we were at Iowa State. We had gone through an athletic director change. A lot of things were changing there, and Lou and I had the dream of wanting to win a national championship and, and take a program as far as we could possibly take it. For those words to even come out of my mouth, yeah, I want to win a national championship, was such a gigantic jump from where I was at that moment. But I let them come out of my mouth, you know? I, I knew that ultimately that was what I wanted. I didn't know what it would take. I was really not knowledgeable that the position had even really opened, to be honest with you. But I received a phone call from my former athletic director, Bruce Vandevelde, who used to work at Oklahoma. He asked if we, you know, might be interested in it. We decided to come down on a trip and check it out. Joe is a great salesperson. I also was really impressed at how much he knew about gymnastics and how much he had followed the sport. A lot of times you don't get athletic directors that are that invested in gymnastics. Just listening to his passion for the sport and what he wanted to do here, maybe my britches were a little too big for me. I was saying I wanted to do the same things. You know, we kind of went back and forth. I, I wanted some things here. I wanted a new facility and some other things because I knew to win a national championship, some of those things had to change at Oklahoma, and they did. And he committed to every single thing that I asked for. And believed in our vision and, and that's kind of how it all happened. I mean, I just remember growing up and looking at the same teams over and over. To me, it's so tough to beat that reputation that those teams have, to beat it out into like inch your way. But that's what you have to do. It's like a slow process of inching your way up, 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 up until you can finally get there. But those people earned that at some point. You know, they, they got that reputation by doing something special and we felt like that's what we had to do. We had to get a reputation for doing something special. I mean, that's what we've been doing the last eight years, trying to earn it. 
trying to be there every year so that eventually we couldn't be denied. You know, they couldn't say, oh, they're, they're not good enough. couple changes for this week so please tune in. Tomorrow morning you need to come in with a tight tank top on and like uh, three-quarter length tights probably. We're gonna do a choreography session tomorrow morning. If you don't have a floor routine you're still gonna be helping and you're still gonna have maintenance conditioning to do in the morning. It won't be taxing but it will be maintenance conditioning. Some of you may have cardio if you have no floor routine or beam routine to work on your artistry, okay? And we are changing Wednesday to a conditioning after practice so that we can actually absolutely run you into the ground and kill you, okay? Because you have Thursday off. All right, we're behind. Let's do the jump rope warm up. Jump rope warm up or run? Run, run. KJ's like my second mom. She's always there for us, always looking out for us, our health and our well being, and making sure we're doing well in school. And I think that's really a great thing to have in a coach. I mean, there's so many special things about KJ. She's a great role model. Um, I look up to her in every aspect of her life. I don't know if she knows that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Is that the face you're going to make? This one? What face are you going to make? That's the face? <laughs> She's a great leader, not only by words, but her actions. I don't want just an 8 incher for gainers, I want a resi. KJ is very unique. She's energetic and she makes up all of our floor routines. And that takes a lot. She's creative and she's just a great person. KJ is probably one of the coolest people I've ever met. She really gets to know each and every one of us before she you know, can really know how to coach you. And I think that means a lot. She takes time and effort to get to know every single person on the team. And it, then you come together as a team and it's great. Work! Details! I remember the bus ride over on the Super 6 night. Everyone was kind of in a zone. And I remember thinking how quiet the bus was. And I was wondering, I wonder if that's a good thing or not, you know? And it was just so calm. I wasn't really nervous, which at first kind of scared me because I like to be nervous. I was just more excited. We knew our team was looking good. We were in a good spot. We had good confidence and that helped also. Something was going to happen. We just didn't know what, but we had a feeling. And no one really talked about the feeling, but we all knew it was there. They keep telling me now after the fact, like even on the workout day, they would say to each other, something feels weird, something feels different. I've had the chills the whole time I was in the arena, the whole event. Even starting and ending preseason, we were like, this is, this is our year. Like, we don't want it next year, the year after, we want it this year. It was an amazing feeling walking out on Super 6 day. I mean, we all had butterflies. We were super nervous, but in a good way. You could definitely tell the crowd was a majority of Alabama fans. The atmosphere in the arena was super intense. I remembered our crowd being very boisterous. Uh, the LSU crowd was very loud, and they were kind of going at it, their own little competition in the stands. Uh, so that was kind of fun to, to watch play out. And we definitely fed off that fun atmosphere and, and it helped keep us loose. You feel the energy in the gym. And when we're down there, we kind of get in our zone and don't really realize who's cheering for who. You just hear all of the noise and energy. There's a lot of pressure for nationals, but throughout the season, you have a lot of pressure and you learn to go with that pressure. And I think we all just took it as another meet. We were very good at controlling our nerves and going out there and doing what we needed to do. You know, it's time. That's what we were saying, it's time. And we were just getting fired up, really excited. Just go out there, leave everything on the floor, no holding back. Bar rotation was really great. We jumbled our lineup quite a bit as far as repositioning people in the lineup. 
I'm just trying to find a, a chemistry there that once you get rolling, it kind of flows and you get one hit, you get another hit, and then all of a sudden it just kind of makes its way through the lineup. We had one girl hit after another after another. Landing after landing, and they were just sticking it, and we were getting so excited. I think it really gave us a lot of confidence when we started sticking landings and kind of showing that we could be up there. But we knew, had we hit a homer on that event, if we just started really well on bars and done a great job, that the rest of the meet was probably going to go extremely well for us. When the last girl finished, we all just looked at each other and were like, OK, we're on a roll. Let's keep it going. Like, we got this, guys. I think everyone just had a feeling in their gut that we knew we could do it. It was our night. Like. Let's go out there. We worked out our jitters without having any major things go wrong, and I felt like, okay, you know, we cleared that, now we're moving on. Our team absolutely wraps themselves up in BEAM when we go to meets. They love it. They don't fear BEAM, they embrace it. We were all just thinking, just relax. Do what you know how to do because we can all do it. Felt like by the time we got there, they were calm as can be and just went out and performed great routine. The first two girls hit their routines and then it always makes you feel a little bit better going into your routine knowing that the other two girls hit. In the middle of my routine, I was just telling myself like, go after it. Make sure you're, you know, giving everything you have, especially the little details because that's what matters. And then when I landed my dismount, it was, it was a great feeling like that rush of energy is just, I don't know, it's a feeling you can't really explain but it was really awesome. Beam is the event that everyone puts more pressure on themselves than needed. You know, it's four inches wide, it's up high, and it's your own podium, and it's just a very different event. And it's slow, and you have to be very precise. So I think after you're done with beam, it's a little relieving. And you can just kind of let loose on floor and vault. To me, floor has been one of our strongest events for the last eight years. I felt like the character in our routines was fun. The other people who were there before us hopefully couldn't compare in dance. Their best stuff was with them. They didn't have to try to be anybody special on that day. There wasn't anybody that needed any extra technical advice or anything like that. It was all about trusting. And then when they take the floor, just get lost. Get lost in the routine. Don't worry about anything. It's a chance for them to express themselves. It's a very energetic event. So we kind of got the two nerve events out of the way first. The kids that either hadn't competed yet were ready to get out there and go, and the kids that had already competed on one or two events, a chance for them to finally just let their adrenaline take over and be aggressive. I was just excited to get out there and do something because I hadn't done anything yet. The crowd getting into the routine and clapping and then seeing our fans and kind of just standing up and cheering really loud, you know, that was a great feeling. Fans that weren't in the meet were kind of pulling for us. Kind of felt like it, it turned that way where everybody was kind of then watching OU and seeing what we were doing and, and felt like a little bit of a turn in the crowd and that was kind of a cool feeling. The whole year I was in the anchor spot so I kind of knew what to expect, like the feeling. I knew that everyone before me had hit and they scored well, so it kind of took a little pressure off of me, but I knew I still could pull another score that could be used. So I just focused on doing what I knew how to do.
I found myself jumping up and down and just like going crazy over everyone's performances because everyone gave an unbelievable performance. Overall, I just felt like Floor had tons of energy. They just were free. They were totally free to just do it. And when you're not feeling that kind of pressure, you know, and you can just be, I felt like that's where they were. This was an event that was kind of an issue for us the year before. If you tenth yourself to death, which is what we did, you're out of it. So that was gonna be super important for us. I didn't know where we stood at that point, but I knew that we had to give everything. Don't hold anything back. This is the last thing you're gonna do today, so show everybody. As each vault went, it just got more exciting and built, and it was fast. It, it just felt like they were vaulting like bullets coming out of a gun. I mean, it was like boom, 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 boom. One girl after another just kept sticking, and it was just crazy watching it, because you're like, is this really happening right now? Like, we had a great three other rotations, and this one's going great. The energy was just flowing, and everyone was on fire. Lou was nervous for Chase, because she didn't stick any in the warm-up. He always wants them to really kind of plant one in the warm-up so they know where it is, and she hadn't done that. Her vault to me stands out huge. She did get a 10 from one of the judges. It was stuck super cold. Here's the last vault. Florida's going on floor. We're like matching each other's scores. We don't really know if they can catch us based on the five people that went in front. I don't know anything really. And Skamen goes and does this amazing vault. I swear I belted out a scream like no one has ever seen a Tarzan scream. It was huge and I wanted the judges to know that was for real and you need to give it what it just earned and we need to be on top of the podium. We knew that we couldn't have given any more. And it just felt like no one could beat us. As we waited, you know, I had people in the stands were saying, they can't catch you, you know, and then I'm like, oh, you know, here's my emotions, whoop, boop, boop, boop. One person would say you won by this much, one person would say you're tied, one person would say you lost by a quarter, I mean, no one had their act together, you know, and that's, I think, what made it so exciting, actually, <laughs> down to the last second. We had no idea, and then people saying that we could tie, and I was, didn't really know that you could tie. People in the corral were crying and they didn't know what was going to happen. We just didn't know what the rule was for a tiebreaker at the national championship. It's never happened. We knew all the tiebreaker rules leading up to that point moving forward that something had to be broken for a team to advance. But in the final moment, none of us knew exactly what the tiebreaker rule was. KJ kind of went into a huddle with us and said, you know, I'm so proud of you guys. No matter what happens, you guys did your best. You guys showed your heart through your teens. And at this point, it's up to the judges. And about that time, I see Adrian from Florida. And he comes running around the podiums, you know. And I know, I know Adrian pretty well, and I could tell he's very excited. And he told us, you did it. You won. And I turned around to the team, and I was like, you did it. And we were like, just so full of mixed emotions, like it was the first in program history we tied. But I didn't know we tied until we were both standing up on top of the podium. Oh, we tied. But I was just hysterically crying for like an hour, so. Oh, it was so surreal standing behind that national championship sign. I kind of had to pinch myself to see if it was really happening. Well, as soon as the confetti started coming down, we I think realized that it had really happened and none of us could speak even. We were just so choked up and crying and excited and it was awesome. There was a flood of emotions. It was them flooding back to 6 a.m. conditioning sessions, hard practices, hard meets, um, the tough times, the things they had to overcome. It, was, it just all poured out of them at the same time. I think it's awesome. 33 years, is that right? Of NCAA gymnastics, it's never happened before. 
An interesting story is that the first year that our men's team won a national championship, they tied also, which was also the first tie in men's gymnastics in history. I think a lot of people have opinions about it, like there should have been a clear winner. Our team earned that that day, and whether it's shared or not, it's still theirs. I know we don't have as much hype as the other schools, but I think that's a good thing for us. It motivates us more to want to be up there and strive to be up there. I think it's kind of good to be the underdog. Because there's no expectations for you and you can just kind of break through anything and people are like, oh, you know, they are kind of good. When you see people trusting the process, trusting what they've done all year long, trusting the work they've put in, trusting one another, and just letting it all go, that was the magic, that, that created the magic. You were watching people's dreams come true as they were performing. They weren't trying to be better than who they were. They were just being exactly who we trained them to be, being themselves. I think by the time, you know, the last couple years of us, you know, knocking on the door, I think the expectation is now there for us to perform and perform very well. Everything changes, I think, when you win, you know, in other people's eyes, but I feel like a lot of people wanted us to win, you know, deep down inside, somewhere down in the bottom of their toes. You always want that underdog to somehow come out on top. But I hope it's not a Cinderella story, because to me that's a once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing.